Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents with me, your host, Valerie, and sometime kitty co-hosts, Miss Purrington and Mookie. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. In addition to podcasts, Comedy Wham brings you articles, album reviews, our advice column, Rochelle Takes on Comedy, our festivals page listing upcoming festivals across the country and the world, and our 2023 FPIA contest page. And by the way, our columns page has been updated with all of the Austin Chronicle articles that I've gotten to write over the last couple of years. We're best known for our events page for live comedy shows in Austin, Houston, and DFW, where 100% of the entries you see come from comics and producers. If you want your show featured on the calendar, click the Submit a Show button from the top of the homepage or the events page to complete the short survey. It's free and easy. Tag us on your Instagram stories, and we'll share your show promo to our Instagram followers. Want to support these resources we provide? You can donate to Comedy Wham on PayPal, Venmo, or even Patreon. Click the Support CW icon on the top right of our homepage to see the ways that you can help us. Now back to our podcast. Launched in 2016, the podcast project brings you funny people and their stories. As a fan, I like to delve into a comic's background and motivations, and we usually take a detour along the way. Consider the interview a way for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And look, we're desperate. We need some fresh reviews on our podcast. So if you listen to this, if you enjoy this episode, even if it's the only one you've ever enjoyed, please rate and review it. Today I am talking with, uh, based on our conversation before I hit record, it's going to be a great, great episode. He is a 2022 Cap City Comedy Club Funniest Person in Austin finalist. He has apparently an unhealthy obsession with League of Legends. Uh, He is the host of, and this is going to give it all away, Sean's show on YouTube. And this is exciting. He's a perfect guest for this. This is our 299th episode and we are going to have an absolute blast it's going to be a party and hopefully we will not get shut down uh because we have episode 300 ready ready to go and now comedy wham presents our guest sean riley hello valerie hi hi how are you i'm doing good fresh from houston fresh from houston (laughs) caffeinated caffeinated it's a beautiful day i got you you know to treat me well i got a coffee (laughs) sugar and yeah. uh, the little sound machine, notebook. if you want. Oh, is this a soundboard yes. for me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I have to. Know. I, I figured you would love okay. that. I'm trying to think about what guests have chosen first, <laughs> and I want to be original, so okay. I want to choose a sound that no one's okay. chosen. All so right. I'm not going to go right. with fart. Okay, yeah, that is the go-to Farts for the, everyone. The go-to. Yep, for sure. I'm going to go with this uh, uh, money because I, I love oh, money. Okay. Yeah. This. Well, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> this is actually. This is, un- yeah. I'm gonna, can I have this? No. no. <laughs> this is like, I want this it's, so badly. Oh, it's so cheap and easy to really? get. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, my God. Where did I get it? Uh, there's a Central Market and South, at the at the South end of, of Lamar, South yeah. Lamar, that little shopping center. Uh-huh. I forgot what the name of the, the shop is, but it has, all, like, this you is think so it's fun. for camping gear. Plus, you could probably just Google it. I'll buy it on Amazon. It's like six bucks. Well, I, I would I kill with sound. I kill with sound. I, I should Josh, bring it on stage. You, I was gonna, well on stage, and you could bring it to your recording with Josh. I'm sure he'd love that. Yeah, you know, I feel like people hate sound effects these days. Yeah, I feel like so many people listen to shows are like, uh, you use sound effects. You guys, uh, 80s much? Uh, the 80s called. They want their soundboard back. I'm like, hey, like you're like such a cynical. I'm a cynical asshole, and you're uh-huh. being so cynical. <laughs> Like, oh, sound effects, really? Yeah, really? There's, it's comedy. All right. All right. That was the last sound effect I'll make. Okay. I promise. Right. Okay. Actually, right. I can't promise that. Yeah, I was going to say. I'll do, give me like five more because I will not stop. I'll like ruin the whole show. I will not stop using this. I get, okay. I'll get five more. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Very happy to be here. Sean, I'm, I'm, I'm very, this is obviously going to be a, a blast, but I do have to ask you my official icebreaker question. Okay, let's hear it. All right, it is one word to describe your past. Ooh, oh man. <laughs> one word? One word. That's a great icebreaker. Oh, my past? I'm going to say privilege. Privilege? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Am I going to get the real Sean today? Or am gonna I just going to total goofball? Am I getting... Or that is, that is the, the real me. That's the real you. Tell me, okay. that, that, this is the real me. Yeah, okay. If you, don't, if you can't handle me at my goofballiest, <laughs> you don't deserve me okay. at my... No. <laughs> I'm a... It depends. Sometimes I'm... I can be serious. I can be a serious guy. Yeah. We don't have to be serious, but I, I the, the, sometimes I do get comics like you that they're just on all the time, and I like I want to get to know like the back, truly the background and motivation. Oh, and... I can switch into NPR, Sean. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have our the little Saudi government. <laughs> the Saudi government. Let's delve into Jamal joke. <laughs> Five minutes in, we bring in the Saudi government. Let's talk about this. Which full disclosure, <laughs> I am sponsored fully okay. by the by right. Mohammed bin Salman. Okay. And his crew. Yeah, crew, yeah. Um, and and I assume you've been to that one hotel that's got, looks like the wind sail. I forgot what the name of it. Oh, in uh, Riyadh? Yeah. Uh, I, they have a whole city. They're like well, making yeah. a whole city. I, yeah. I, I, ha- I wish I'd... I went to the one where they killed Jamal Khashoggi. Oof. No, I'm kidding. Sorry, I'll be serious. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm always... You know, uh, Robin Williams, there was like, oh, he was always no, on. No, I've never heard of him. <laughs> he was episode 296, oh. wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the that ghost. guy. Yeah. Um, no, but you're right. I think comics are always on. A lot of comics. Some comics. Some, yeah. Some comics yeah. I like do interview on my show, and, and they're, they're like, yo. I'll be like, what, how's it going? Good. I'm like, you're, you're not going to make it. Like, you suck. Like, you actually, like, how's it? What's going on, dude? How would you? Where'd you just that? come from? No, not to their face, because oh, okay. I'm fake. Oh, All actually, right. can I change my word <laughs> fake. to fake? What's my past? Fake. Fake. All right. Uh, where did you grow up? Silicon Valley. All right. Bay Area. I see. I don't even know if I can. <laughs> you, 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 you don't believe me? <laughs> okay. Can I just say one thing? <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, my buddy Conrad Fagan, he's an Austin comic. Yeah. Cra- I love Conrad. He's crazy. Yeah. If he ever, I'll send this audio clip to him. He's crazy. <laughs> he's a crazy guy. Like I'm like crazy and like I'm in danger. Not crazy oh, like wow. a zany, oh. fun, uh-huh. endearing crazy. Like I'm gonna like. Wow. He's you know um, but he said this really funny thing about me. He was like he was like. I, I I said something like I said like or I brought, I'm bringing this up because you were like I can't even believe that you're I can't even believe you, <laughs> so I said I joked or something and then Conrad was like is that a lie, and I was like, no or I was like yeah it's a, I was joking uh-huh. and he's like so all your jokes are just lies, <laughs> so he was like so what's the punchline is it's a lie, the, what's the joke is that it's not true, <laughs> and I was like fuck you Conrad because that is my whole uh-huh. like my whole like being is just I just lie. I'm just ironic. Yeah. I speak sar- sarcasm. You know, okay. Oh, sar- I, I my second language is raised. sarcasm. All right. I was raised in, in a very sarcastic family. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting is my son is like not sarcastic and he calls me out on it. So I feel like I've become less sarcastic as time goes. I, I support your sarcasm. Yeah. I support it. I, you, I think some... Oh, go yeah. ahead. I, I mean, it, some, sometimes I could see it's not, not great. Yeah. But maybe, you know, if you're just hanging out with your friends, it's fun. It's cool. Mm-hmm. But when you're trying to parent, it's Oh, less cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> less oh, effective. man. I'm not. I, when I, if I ever have a kid, I'm going to have to be super sarcastic. It's going to be tough. Yeah. I could see that, like, joking around, like, wow, like, yeah. your room looks really clean. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like sar- there's sarcasm, irony, and then there's passive aggra- being passive aggressive. Yeah. And they're all, like, there's overlap. Right. And I right. think pe- some people are like, what do you, like, I can't read you. Yeah. I can't. What's your? I can't read you. I'm yeah, like, Sean, I can't read you. Why are you trying you. to read me? I'm, in, <laughs> I'm not a book. I should have been a rapper. I really should. Really? Have, I wanted to be a rapper. Oh. Oh, I could. I could see you. You know, filling in for. Oh, I, I do get them confused, but either Ad Rock or MCA. One of. I could. Oh, is that, I've never heard of those guys. <sighs> are those guys like comedy? <laughs> Sorry, I love rap though. Beastie Boys. Oh, the Beastie Boys. <laughs> Everybody knows. Oh, right? oh, yeah, yeah. You do know. I know Beastie. Boys, I know the Beastie right? Boys, but I don't know like <laughs> the band. I'm horrible with yeah. names of the names of people or like the names of artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I love Zeppelin, but I could I like John Bonham. That's, that's, that's the it. only like I like. I know I love Led Zeppelin. Jimi Hendrix. No, no, no. no. He's not Zeppelin. I'm like horrible. <laughs> okay. I, I'm really bad with pop culture. I love art, that's but I'm crazy. just like like if. You know when people talk about actors mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, you know, 
you know uh, this actor like, yeah. that was in this this in this movie. I'm like, I don't know who. I can't picture them. I don't know. Yeah. Like Tom. Well, yeah. The, these days, I'm like that with actors too. I can't. My boyfriend sees a million movies, and he's uh-huh. like, Oh yeah, it's got such and such in it. I'm like, I have no idea who that is. Yeah, and it's like, and then they're like, you don't know such and such. Yeah. I'm like, no, I don't know such and such. I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading. Yeah. I'm not like consuming. Wait, you're reading? I do read. Okay. What, what, what do you, what do you like reading? I, I just, I, I just finished, uh, rental property investing. <laughs> that, well, that came out of left field. <laughs> is that a YA book? Uh, what, what is that? <laughs> it's YA fiction. <laughs> Okay. It's cool. uh, it's NS not safe for work. Oh, bummer. No, but I was like, I go through these periods where I'm like, maybe I should be a slumlord. <laughs> like I, and I like read it, and I was like, because I studied engineering, and so I'm like, oh, really, cool. I love like math, and like, I do a little bit of invest, investing too, and um, I just like got obsessed with it. Like I read the whole book in one night, and wow. it was like, it's incredible huh. how it doesn't even really. You can start with a little bit of capital. And really, yeah, become a slumlord quite quickly in America. Hmm. Yeah, I can um, see that if you have start one and then slumlord your way through the top. Yeah, yeah. you just you go to find the section eight. You the book be. is really horrifying. The guy that wrote the book, I don't even know his name, but he's like, yeah, like there's a whole chapter on training your tenants, and you know my parents are landlords, so I like you know, um, and they're not like slumlords, but like they just have a rental property, but like. This guy, this guy talks, he's like owns a, like a bunch of apartment buildings. And he's like, I train my tenants. If they're a day late, I evict them. Holy it's, cow. And I'm like, and then it's like, it's, but it's a how-to. Like you get to see inside of his mind. Yeah. And you're like, my tenants pay for, for utilities, water, garbage. They pay for everything. Because you need to maximize your profit per unit. I guess. And um, anyway, that was the last book I read. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what kind of engineering did you study? Uh, I did aerospace. Aerospace. Oh, you talk about that on stage. I, I do, yeah. So I appreciate real. how much, like, yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, like, such an asshole. I never listened to the show. Can I, <laughs> I, know, can I right? swear on this? Yes, you can. I no, should... you can't. You can't. <laughs> All the other comics, <laughs> I'm allowed them to. You cannot. Um, <laughs> no, you can't. no I, I really appreciate how much you, like, I, sh- I, I just got to, I mean, this, I don't do many, inter- <laughs> it was my first kind of interview ever. For real? Yeah. Or, like, I've been on podcast, but, like... Yeah. This is my... F- so, anyway, I just appreciate how much you, you know, checked out my stuff. Yeah. And I'm sorry I didn't do the same. Yeah. I feel horrible. I, I, you should. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a... Well, you do such a service to the community, and it's so well, underrated. Thank you. Review the show. And listeners. under, like... Underfunded. Yeah, no, <laughs> underfunded. <laughs> do you want me to connect you with the Saudis? Would you? Would you? I can CC you. Okay. With, on this That's, email thread I have. Awesome. <laughs> That All you have to do, awesome. you do a 30-second promo okay. on Saudi Aramco. Saudi Aramco. Which is the state oil company. And you okay. just say, we're sponsored by Saudi Aramco. Okay. We uh, love their oil. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a hybrid, though. Is that a problem? Uh, no, they're actually diversifying into EV. Okay. So that's actually right, great. Right, cool. So they're actually getting into... Oh, I could be ahead of the... the you're, yeah, yeah, you're ahead of the curve. Nice. Nice. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so Silicon Valley. That's right, yeah. Uh, were you always this high energy, this much of a, a goofy person growing up? I uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. When I, I I flip between, I'm not like bipolar, but I flip between like, like if I'm in a good mood, I'm like very like bubbly and stuff. But yeah. then like, some, it's this or like I love. I, I'm also super introverted. Mm. Like I gotta be alone. Wow. Um, I gotta it, have time to recharge. It's so crazy because you. So far, this conversation, it's almost, and, and I am old, so just, you know, bear with me. It reminds me of having a conversation with my son. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> because he's, he's introverted, self-reported. I think he's actually a little more extroverted than he, he realizes uh-huh. he is. Into engineering. He will go, he, I could see him reading the Slumlord book because he'll go into these wormholes and just like chase down Wikipedia links until he learns something. Yeah. And um, can be goofy, but also serious. So that's like awesome. Looking into the future. What if I'm your long lost son? <laughs> oh my God, what if you are? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a possibility? No, okay. Oh, no, I, 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 <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I've given anyone up for adoption. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, that's fine. But, uh, okay. So, uh, siblings? 
only child. Really? Yeah. See, because yeah. I would have, I would really expect this from like somebody who had to seek attention when they were in that bubbly mode. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you're right, and it's like I, I like my parents were working all the time. My mom is a, a nurse for the; she's a retired nurse, but she was worked for the VA hospital. Oh, wow! And my dad like kind of bounced around in different sales jobs, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I, it was uh, I definitely seek their attention for sure. I think. Yeah. I should see a therapist. I've never been a therapy. Oh, that's okay. But um, it's comedy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> releasing an episode uh, today where. Uh, it was interviewing the guys of Sure Thing, and oh, uh, Brendan and uh, Duncan and Duncan, yeah, uh-huh. those guys are great. They are awesome. Yeah, and the show is amazing. I've done that. The show's incredible. Yeah, it's it's a great show. And uh, when I got divorced, I went to their show. It's literally my therapy. Yeah, just going to laugh, relax, have fun. And in the middle of our our podcast episode. Brendan asked, have you ever gone to real therapy? <laughs> and I'm like, no. To you? <laughs> yeah, to oh. me. <laughs> I'm like, no. Why would I need it? I've got comedy. <laughs> it is. It's. I think it is better. It's. I think it's better than real. I mean, I, I can't say. I've never been to real therapy. Yeah. But I, one, my, one, my thing, was, I feel like if I go to one, one I almost episode of therapy, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm a media mogul. Everything, yeah, everything is content. Yeah. <laughs> there one episode of th- this is the Sean Show. <laughs> I'm just gonna re- rebrand. It's gonna be the Sean Show. <laughs> the Sean Show. You won't believe how long it took me to figure out that should be the name of my podcast. Really? I was like, just over. Th- I overthink things. I'm like, I gotta mm. make this cool name, and I'm like, so I f- I'm so self aware. Maybe I'm not, but you know, I'm like yeah. so like. Like, I think of something, and I'm like, oh, that's been done. That sucks. It's like, oh, that's so fuck lazy. People are going to think, oh, that's so lazy. But I'm like, because, like, the Sean, pod, the Sean Show podcast, like, yeah. oh, wow, you're going <laughs> to, the name of the show is going to be your name, and then the word pod, uh-huh. or, the, or, like, the Sean Riley Show. Uh-huh. How many, like, podcasts is, like, the first name, last name show? Well, there's one very large <laughs> podcast uh, by somebody who relocated from California to Austin that, that has an eponymous Podcast that's name. true <laughs> so. well, and it's like and it's like uh and so it's like yeah i don't want to see like it's and it's weird because it's like he are you talking about tim Dillon? no i'm not even no i'm talking about the joe rogan experience oh right 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 yeah, yeah. um or even little quite literally the show the first name last name show those even specific words like people do that yeah, and it's yeah. like yeah the joe rogan experience i mean it's like so i wanted to anyway Sean, it's like an alliteration. I was like, oh, it's an alliteration. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. yeah. Who cares? And you talk to Josh all the time from what I could tell. So it's kind of, it's, you know, it's a little tongue in cheek that it's, you know, your show. But That's, you, you come off as like, it's just going to be me. But you're bringing in Josh all the time. And you have guests. I, I do. I have a, <clears throat> a Patreon where I'll interview people. And okay. um, it's, it's fun. It's, yeah. I like, I've, been, I've had like eight podcasts. I respect that you've done 300. <laughs> Truly, then it's not like failed. Like it's so. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it no. will after this. It's gonna get canceled after this episode. Are you? I, what? I'm, <laughs> if I mean Mohammed bin Salman listens, it, we. I know. I'm this gonna get canceled. Episode is sponsored by uh, Saudi Sa- Sa- Ram. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm gonna get killed. We're getting no, it wrong. Well, they, <laughs> no. they don't. They don't. They don't scrape the web for. <laughs> Uh, they might have a department, like a propaganda department that scrapes the web for mentions of... We'll bleep that out. Okay. We'll, All right, yeah. we'll bleep that yeah, out. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think it's a testament to my stubbornness and my continued interest in the Austin comedy scene that I'm, I I don't have great numbers. There's probably going to be two people that listen to this episode. Uh, if you I share have, it, maybe I have fifty. Four. Lis- I have 50 listeners. Okay. I will make sure all of them... Okay. I actually Good. threaten my listeners. Okay. On the show, <laughs> okay. like I literally I'm, maybe I should threaten. It works. It's wow. like it's like a. I hate this. I'm not even gonna say the word. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's like or it's a, you know, that uh, this like pickup dating tactic when the guy, like, is like says shitty things to the date. Uh huh. Oh And, yeah, and yeah. I'll just spell it N E G G I N G. Yeah, yeah. I hate that yeah. it's so close to the N word. I don't yeah. even want to say it. Yeah. 
Like, why would they, why would they make the word so close? Because <laughs> it's negative. So right. So it's the right. verb form of, of that. Yeah. Like, oh, that's word. true. So we're, we'll bypass. We're, we're yeah. Just, anyway. Yeah. But I do that to my audience. And I think, oh it, I, I think, I mean, I've lost listeners. But, <laughs> but I'll literally be like, I'll be like, if you like Elon Musk, I want you to click. I want, I don't want you as a fan. <laughs> like, I want you to click up, click out. Click the little X on YouTube. I don't want oh you. Oh my gosh! And I think it, I don't know. I think it works. I, I can't do it. I can't pull it off because I'm too. I don't know. I don't like being negative towards people. So. I resp- I like that. Yeah. That's good. Well, you know, you've got fifty. I've got two. So, <laughs> see, we'll see. Hey, it's empirically. <laughs> <the difference. laughs> it's time. It's maybe switch it up. There's always room to innovate. Maybe it's time to, yeah. for a. A villain origin story, Valerie. Maybe. Oh my gosh, maybe that's what 300 will bring. <laughs> Turn over a new leaf. <laughs> Enough of this nice guy shit. <laughs> I love it. There you go. I'm bringing it out. I don't, I don't yes. like it. That's my whole goal but as an artist is to bring out numbers hate, <laughs> negativity. We need more hate in yeah. the world. Every artist we is do. all lovey dovey. I'm yeah. like, no, Fuck what that. What happened to yeah. hate? All right, Sean. I really don't like you, so let's let's get into this. Okay. Is that gonna work? Do you think that's gonna work? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> All right. I gotta work on this. All right. Were you a class clown? Uh, uh I feel like no. I was like a. I was like a. I was a goody. I was a teacher's pet. Ah. I was like a goody two shoes. Okay. Like I like, like was so. Uh, I loved. Like I deeply respected the authority hmm. of of the teacher, yeah. of the classroom, and like I like kneeled to the will of these teachers. Yeah. Like I never, never got in trouble. Huh. Always studied. I was a very little good little boy. So you followed um, the rules and the convention of I'm gonna be the the teacher's pet. I'm gonna do well in school. I'm gonna go study aerospace engineering. Where did you go to school? I have to know. This it was uh, Cal Poly. San Luis Obispo. Okay. It's it, it's like in the central coast of California. Okay. Um, because I didn't get into Berkeley, which I will. Oh. Has I still I'm jaded about. I like don't I'm out of that world academia entirely, but I still have nightmares yeah. about not getting into Berkeley. That really really crushed me. Uh, did you try any other California schools or uh, other schools? I applied to. It was either between Cal Poly and I got into UC Santa Cruz. Okay. I have a really funny story about UC Santa Cruz actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, so. I just remembered this. The, I, I visited UC Santa Cruz with my two friends and um, my two female friends. I had a crush on one of them. And we were like senior year of high school, visited UC Santa Cruz. Uh-huh. And I remember we're walking and we're, just, we're like touring the campus. And all of a sudden my one friend, uh, the girl I had a crush on, Wendy, she's like, she's like, wow, Sean, that was really mature of you and brave of you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you didn't see those two nude women that we just walked by? And I was like, I collapsed to my knees. I was like, are you, f- please tell me you're joking. I was like, because it's like super like liberal and kind of free. Yeah. F- like, you know, that's what you Santa Cruz is all about. It's sure. like, so I'm like, they're nude. Like, I like, and, the, and then my friend, she, she was like, they're like two beautiful naked women just walked by us. And I was like pounding the ground. Oh my God. I'm like, please tell me that you're joking. I look, it was like my, like, like my mom had died. Like it was that bad of news. I was like, "This can't be true." And I was like, "Where are they?" And I'm like, "I can't run back and go like, they'll be creepy." Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my UC Santa Cruz. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, but I, I should have gone there. It would have been way more fun. Hmm. You know, it's trees, it's nature. It's, it's like everyone's yeah. doing drugs. It's so much more fun. Huh. But you got through college. I made it through. Did you do any performance at all in in your entire school career? I did. I was actually the uh, the president of the Cal Poly Comedy Club. Really, very, very proud. Wow. And we booked some decent. I booked uh, Trevor Wallace. We oh. booked some decent people on wow. our shows. Like he was kind of when he was coming up in L.A., he would come up. Uh, the Verzi Triplets. I don't know if you know those guys. Mm-hmm. They're one of America's Got Talent, I think. And um, so that's kind of when I got started in stand up. Okay. And what? So not until college. I guess my first, I got into it, I was, uh, well, this Wendy, this girl I had a crush on, she did poetry in high school, mm-hmm. and uh, like spoken word, and I got into it because like, she did spoken word, so I was like, no way, I do spoken word, and I hate poetry. Uh-huh. I was like, so I, I wanted to like be around her, so I like did spoken word, and I like hated it, and I just, like started making fun of it. Uh-huh. Like, I go to these like poetry slams, mm-hmm. 
and it was a Silicon Valley, so it was mostly like rich kids talking up, like, <laughs> like they don't even deserve to write at all. Yeah, like they don't yeah. just, like they're like my dad's a lawyer. Yeah, he's never home. He's not, I get home and my dad's still at work. Yeah, yeah. and everyone's like, it's like shut the fuck up, oh, shut Mercedes. the fuck up. Yeah, I get home from my Catholic private school. No one is home. Wow. <laughs> And I'd be like listening to these guys. I'm like, you guys have no idea like how good you have it. And you're trying to like, not that, you know, I don't get all philosophical. Everyone has problems. Uh-huh. I'm not trying to minimize the problems of certain people. Yeah. But it, it's just funny. Yeah. Um, and then I go up there and make fun of, I'd like do fate, like satirical poetry. Like I go up there and be like, uh. why did the bird fly high in the sky? I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> And then, anyway, and that's kind of how I stumbled into, like, comedies. Okay. Like, being funny on stage, I was like, wow, I really like being a jerk. Yeah. I really like, <laughs> and everyone hated me. Like, I'd do these, like, satirical poems, and, like, people would be like, that's, you know, it's actually not, like, that's, like, not cool. Like, that's actually, like, really rude. Uh-huh. And they're like, anyway, that's kind of how I stumbled into it. Like, so, seeing, yeah. what was your first stand-up performance? It was, a, I think my first, oh, okay, it was actually in freshman year of college, in front of, uh, it was an open mic night at my college freshman dorm. Okay. And it was uh, for literally just the RA of our dorm. Oh. It was just him. And I went up there and I performed for just him. That was my first time doing stand-up, technically. Wait, why? Did, was it an audition kind uh, of thing? No, it was, like, it was just an open mic that like anyone could kind of go to. Uh-huh. And I thought there'd be a bunch of people there and it was just him. How bizarre. It was, and I still went up. Like, I was doing, like, year four suffer hell mics on my first one. Because usually people are like, oh, my first time doing a mic, there was 200 people, and I crushed, and that's yeah. why I love it. That's yeah. like, I crushed. I'm like, no, like, I was already hating it. <laughs> but that's, that's how much I love it, is, like, I was already, like, I was like, even though it's just him, like, I've never done this before, but, like, I love, I know I love this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how did you approach that, and then what made you realize, well, I guess you were in this club that you became president of, so were you learning about the art of comedy? Uh, I like, I think it was sophomore year, actually my buddy, who I th- he still does, does stand-up, but he's also like a, has a real estate hedge fund now, my buddy Nelson Lynn, oh. who was the original president of the Cal Poly Comedy Club, I was walking by and he was like heckling people. I was, it was actually the club fair. So he had like a oh, PA wow. and he was oh, like, hey, fun. you suck. Like, what do you do? You suck. <laughs> it's like, and I'd be like, holy, I was like, holy shit, there's a comedy club? Uh-huh. And then I joined and then he re- graduated and then I inherited the club. Okay. And I became the, and, the, 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 and that's kind of how I got started. And like, they would, he, we, we would do open mics on campus and there were open mics around town uh, in San Luis Obispo. So I c- kind of got connected with that comedy scene, which was like, it's actually doing very well now, hmm. the Central Coast. But at the time, it was like pretty small. Yeah, yeah. Mostly like burnout guys in their like early forties that just did like coke and meth. And <laughs> it's real uh, losers. Yeah. Real losers in the in the comedy scene. Really? <laughs> funny, guy, funny guys. Really? Yeah, I yeah. Why? Well, I, I thought everybody was you know a champ. <laughs> world. They they, they weren't our, all studying aerospace engineering. Oh, I'm, okay, I'm kidding. Got I'm it. kidding. <laughs> But yeah, and I kind of just got more and more, it became a bigger part of my life over time. Like I wasn't like through, I didn't like throw my whole life away for comedy on year one. It took me mm-hmm. like, I think three or four years to be like, that was, it was, it was the only thing I always made time for. Okay. Like everything else I was like, I can, I can skip class, I can skip this thing or whatever, but comedy I always had to be there. Yeah. Did you, I don't have a, a sense other than it's central California did you uh, go to L.A., San Francisco, to check out their comedy scenes? I did. Uh, in the summers in college, I would go to the Bay. Okay. Back to the, where, where I'm from and uh, do the mics there. Yeah. So I kind of, and then I would do L.A. like kind of a bit later in mm-hmm. college. I'd, I'd check out L.A. a few times. So yeah, I was kind of up and down the, co- the, the coast of California. And, and San Luis Obispo, it's like two hours north of, of Santa Barbara. Okay. Um, but it's kind of... Uh, it's, it's a lot of people, you know, Oprah calls it the happiest city in America. Really? Yeah. Wow. Actually, my, but my buddy has a great joke, Aiden Candelario. Shout out to Aiden. He's like a slow com, com, comedian. And he has this great joke about that where he's like, you know, it's crazy that Oprah said that San Luis Obispo is the uh, 
happiest city in America because it's all white people. Like Oprah really came here, looked around, and was like, "This is the place." <laughs> <laughs> really funny joke. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you're going through college. You're part of this this club. You're performing, and is, you you've already alluded to it that that's it's the only thing that you wouldn't miss as far as performing. Um, so what what did you do with you when you graduated? Did you do the adult? You know, I've got this engineering degree. Yeah, I, I you know I was all over the place. But when I was in college, I like uh, I was like I went through kind of like four or five different career goal paths mm. in like a year. It was it was it, oh, saw, wow. it was really strong. I was like, well, I, just, I and I just I never got because I had a horrible GPA. Uh. I had like a two point nine GPA. Oof. And it's like it's it was really like. You know, once you get into like the, if you start freshman year with a two five, which I did, because <laughs> okay. I was like partying and I'm hoping this is where you and my son have like you know, diverge. Part okay. Ways, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Inshallah, he will get a four point oh. Yeah. Well, it's like I was just I I was just like uh, I would I mean I just and it wasn't even that I like skipped class like I was like a great student in high school I was just like not smart enough huh. like I really the classes I was like really getting screwed wow. by these like intro freshman engineering classes but um kind of like I was like oh I want to be an astronaut and then I was like I have bad vision so I was like okay I can't be an astronaut mm-hmm. then I was like oh I want to work at NASA and like my junior year of college I applied to like all these different aerospace companies like NASA Raytheon a bunch of like uh North of Grumman, Lockheed Martin. And it was just like, I got rejected over and over again because mm. of my GPA. And I didn't, and it's like, I feel like people, and it's like, it is like, I think it is a privileged thing to complain about a low GPA in your engineering program. It's like, because you, you do have, you still have the degree. But it's like, I don't think people talk about how stressful having a low GPA is. Because mm-hmm. I, looking back, I was like, I was like, I'm fucked. Like I can't get a job. Yeah. All my all my friends. It's like now in comedy, all my friends get JFL. It's the same feeling. <laughs> Every like when my when my it's the same feeling. Like my friends get internships at NASA. Yeah. When now people get JFL, I'm yeah. like fuck you. I'm so <laughs> jaded. And it's the same feel. It's the same energy. And so back then I was like, and I uh, so it was like NASA, and then eventually I was like, oh, I want to. Um, and then I got into like finance and, and the stock and stocks. Mm. And so for and then after that I was like, oh, I want to do like a, I want to be a quant on Wall Street. What is that? So it's basically um, these uh, mostly men, unfortunately, very male dominated field, mm. where you um, mostly in New York and they basically like uh, it's like high frequency trading. So they'll write software algorithms to trade to trade stocks. Huh. automatically, okay. like using AI and data wow. and big data, lots of buzzwords and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, but, you know, it, it uh, and so I was really interested in that because I was like, oh, I have this degree in air, and I double majored in math, so I was like, ah. um, I can use these skills and be evil mm-hmm. <laughs> and just work at a hedge fund. Right. And then I learned that I couldn't get a job there either because my GPA was too low. <sighs> Anyway, and it doesn't matter. Who cares? It's like, it's like, oh no, you didn't get a job in banking. You lose. And then I wanted to do investment banking. I was kind of all over the place. I like wanted to be in venture capital for a while. Like I wanted to invest in startups. Mm-hmm. And I really only was able to like break into uh, Wall Street. And that's what I did after college for a couple of years. I worked at a small investment bank. And I only got the job because I lied on my resume about my GPA. I like, I like, was so I was like because I was like I have nothing to lose. So I, I like literally lied and I had I said I had a three six. Whoa. I have I, have a, I graduated with like a two eight. Sean. And on my resume I said three point six unweighted. And I got a job in investment banking. Holy shit. And I have no regrets. I would do it again. I would actually change it to three point nine. <laughs> and because that's what and I realized looking back that's what Wall Street trains uh, people for. It it they like they game just the system. It's game the system. It's like they tell you these rules, and you're like, "Oh, you want a job on Wall Street? Gotta have a three nine, and you gotta go to Harvard." And most people are like, "Well, I don't have that. Yeah, I have a two point six from Cal Poly." But then I realize, and but it's like this. I, I have a whole theory on it. It's like, it's like um, uh, hazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. They haze you with this like psychological gamesmanship. Yeah. And then you're like, wait a minute, I just have to lie and then I win? And that's what it is. And then I, and then I won. I just lied. And it worked. I lied and it, and it worked. Jeez. And I was, and that like, and then anyway, that bro was like crazy. And I was like, I was like into that for a while. I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah. Cause you'd been a rule follower and you went to your classes and you teachers pet and you were, you were the good kid. Exactly. And then you're like, Oh, but if I break the rule, they want you holy to. Shit. And then when you get to the job, it's all bullshit. And yeah. then you get in the industry and like, Oh, you're, we're all just lying. We're all liars. Ugh. It's really gross. Ugh. And that's How why. How long did you last in that? Um, I still work there. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, like a like a, a year and a half. Yeah. And then I was moonlighting. I was doing comedy at night, mm-hmm. and uh, that was stressful. But um, I just I still had to. And then I eventually quit and moved to L.A. Okay. Uh, and then I spent a few. I was in L.A. during COVID, and then I moved to Austin like two years ago. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, so that's my that's my life story. All right. Well, <laughs> in that case, I guess we're wrapping up then. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so why? Well, I know New York was radically shut down during COVID. Yeah. LA was, but you had you know the the bonus of the weather allowed a lot of outdoor shows. Oh yeah. So why did you choose to to move out of LA? You know, because I moved, like, I think mid, like, July 2021, and okay. L.A. was uh, pretty much well, almost open again, by the, when I, even when I moved. It was actually, they were doing indoor shows, and yeah. the Hollywood Improv uh, was back open, and they were doing their, like, lottery open mic, and uh, I was just, like, getting, it wasn't, it really didn't even have anything to do with COVID. It was just, like, I was just tired of, like, the... Um, just the, I was just really sick of the process hmm. that LA has to develop comedians, air quotes, develop yeah. comics because, you know, everyone think I, I, everyone has this take, but it's like it's just, you know, I remember week after week I would go to, the the open mic at the Hollywood Improv, in the lab, the small room they have there, mm-hmm. and it's just miserable. Hmm. You put your name in a bucket. Everyone knows it's rigged. It's huh. it's like if you know the host, then you can get a spot. And it's just like eight, nine weeks of not getting your name pulled, Oof. paying 1600 a month for rent, and just it's so expensive to live in L.A. I'm like, I haven't been on stage. Or and then the mics that you do get on, it's, it's you know, it's a nightmare. Everybody, it, L.A. is a nightmare to be an up-and-coming comic. It's just mm-hmm. so brutal. Yeah. And I visited Austin for a week, and I was like, this is cool. Like, you can just get up on stage, and it's it's not like a cesspool of like rich kids like me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that are all, like, try, like, can just subsidize a career sure. fully, which, like, you know, I was, I was still kind of working remotely and, st- and stuff at that, at time, at that time during LA, but, yeah, it wasn't even, like, the, f- the fact that, like, Aust- like, I didn't move to Austin because it was more open than mm-hmm. LA or New York because yeah. uh, of code. It was just, like, I was just really, like, I wanted to, like, be in a place that, like, you know, I felt like there was more upside. Yeah. For like young talent, yeah, and more stage time, easier S- stage time. Yeah, easier stage time, and like the I think the people like it's, um, and you know I'm not gonna lie, like Rogan moving here was a factor, like because I, I think I was more into him at the time. Mm-hmm. I was like listening, like I don't I haven't listened to his show in a long time, because mm-hmm. um, I think he has leaned a little bit, a lot to the right, <laughs> and like well, and some, sometimes I'm like sometimes people are like oh like Rogan's a centrist, he interviews whatever, he's objective. And but like, but like, those are the people like listen to something from like last month. Yeah. It's like, like listen to Joe Rogan interview Andrew Yang in 2020. Yeah. And Andrew Yang's talking about UBI, and Joe Rogan's like, yeah. <laughs> like Andrew <laughs> Yang's like, everyone deserves to make $800 a month, yeah. paid for by the taxpayer, and Rogan's like, yeah. That's there's no you, if you said that to him today, you'd be like, what the f- are yeah. you saying? <laughs> right. Smoking right. a cigar. No way. <laughs> Welfare? You're talking about welfare. Oh, <laughs> uh, you want a welfare state? Three years ago, he was like, Andrew, I just want some good ideas. It's like, are you for UBI or are you not for UBI? Yeah. I, I, I wonder if part of it is like now being in Texas, which is just so grossly conservative mm-hmm. and, and, and hard right. 
other than you know pockets of Austin, uh, if that's part of the influence or I don't know, it's you, kind of it is kind of interesting because I used to think he was he was more center, and now it's like him and his little clique. Yeah, yeah. Ex- I th- no, I think that's a great point. I think I think the text I think being in Texas is definitely an influence. Uh, but I think more important, in my opinion, more importantly, is just the fact that he's like almost a billionaire. If, his, mm. if he's worth three hundred million, four hundred million dollars, yeah, you know, and you like surround. And I mean, I mean, even the short time I spent on Wall Street, like, and I met a, a handful of people that had were like not that wealthy, but like pretty wealthy. Yeah, it's like a um, an echo chamber. Hmm. If he spends his time with other billionaires, startups of technology companies CEOs of technology companies and they tar- you know they have this kind of like they have this god complex view mm. about like their place in the or like they're, they're like oh like I well I made it I worked yeah. hard and I made it in America that's why so it's like so why can't other people it's it's you you be you know and then sure. you start to like then you start to be like yeah why don't people work harder well and then like 5 5 hours later you're a republican when you start saying, "Why don't people work harder?" And then, and then other people are like, "Yeah, we worked hard and we made it. If people just worked harder, they could make money." Yeah. And it's like, no, that's all it is. No, no, sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, Sean. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm screaming to this. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> no, that's that's what that's what this is. All right. So uh, you your. Uh, aerospace engineering degree and your time with uh, finance or investment banking uh, have all made it into jokes on stage. So uh, even though we we started our conversation and a lot of your uh, wild and crazy uh, behavior, I, I don't want to just say say like what I, I no please 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 <laughs> roast please roast me. I'm so. I'm so- I know I can never do a roast show because I'm. I'd be like, sorry, after every single word, I would be horrible, <laughs> and I would cry. If said something mean about me. Too. It's, re- it's. I couldn't do it. It's real. I've done. A, I actually did a roast battle at the mothership. Yeah. Oh my god! Actually, the first ever, when the mothership first opened, I did a roast battle in their the little boy, their small room. Yeah. Horrible name for a comedy room. Hey, well, I did a. I yeah. crushed in the little boy. What? <laughs> you should have seen me on on Monday night. I was in this little boy. What? What? What, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, the little boy. You know the little boy. Next night I was in the fat man. Uh, Woo! <laughs> tell you what, that's yeah, different. I'll tell you what. The big difference between little boys and fat man when you're crushing in them. It's great. And I yeah. anyway, I did yeah. a roast battle at the mothership, and like, um, do you, have you interviewed Jamisha Albo? You know her. Uh-uh. She's a very funny uh, up and coming. I know comic. the name, but she was yeah. on Kill Tony. Yeah, she opened um, for Genevieve. I remember that uh, when Genevieve uh, headlined the Velveeta Room earlier this year. Oh yeah, yeah, and so she's yeah. she's doing great. Um, and uh, I got I interv- I roasted her Oof. at the Mothership, and you know, for those listening, I'm a white guy. Jamisha is a is a black woman, and it was like tough. Uh-huh. I was like sitting down there, like, okay, I'm gonna be at the. The Joe Rogan Alt Right Comedy Club. I'm about to roast a black woman. Let's write some roast jokes. It was a really tough w- line to walk because, mm-hmm. like, you can't write, like, as you said, like, the roasts have to be roasts. Yeah. It's this weird thing where it's like, it's like I don't know. It's like you can like, they want you to be really edgy, but you can't uh-huh. be too like. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's edgy, but we know he doesn't mean it. But it's a roast. It's not. It's not for oh, me. Maybe that's the- little sign that you can wear it's, it's really not me <laughs> you unleash yeah yeah uh where was i going oh, okay so yeah so your style of comedy how would you describe it is it observational or is it a little more uh a little more wacky because from what i remember it's really a lot of observational goofiness that's a great. I think I think that's a great way to describe it. I would say it's angry. Really. Angry. Uh, sort of angry. W- angry. Goofy. Huh. That's a great words. I, that's what I'm. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. I want to get more <laughs> ranty. It's really hard to rant on stage and be funny. Huh. I think people get scared when I start ranting. Really. Because I think I just have too much conviction. Oh. When I like. Yeah. 
like I was like, like I I've said like I've tried to rant and like say like you know crazy like I like I, one time I was like I like I was in a frat and I was like what if we had a genocide for the frat bros would that be good? <laughs> and people were like, and then I was like, but not the Jewish frats. Oh God. And then I was, and that actually got, a, but it's like, you know, it's like hard, like, you know, it's, it was like, I love the, and yeah. like, there's, there's so many layers to art. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's, it's, so it's like, obviously I don't want like, but people, I think they take it too seriously. They're like, this guy like believes this. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm on a stage. I'm trying to be funny, but I do believe all the frat bros. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Which is a popular, which is actually why I do this. That's yeah. the, no. <laughs> Your, your future platform. <laughs> Got to be negative. Not get, the ones. Yeah, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad. I mean, that's a good take. That's the kind of take that gets listeners. We're gonna write that. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> put that in the article. So. <laughs> Make it the episode name. Oh my god. Um, get rid of the fat boys. Ex- except for the Jewish ones. <laughs> except for the cultural ones. Because I've been to a lot of frat parties, and the, only the Jewish ones were fun. They're the fu- most really? fun one. Yeah. Huh. They're great. It was like a good time. All the Anglo-Saxon frat parties were horrible. Hmm. They were playing awful oh, music. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. yeah. But yeah, I would say I'm like kind of zany. I'm trying to be zany. zany, you know. Sometimes I feel like I'm too monotone. I'm trying to still find my voice. Huh. I feel like I'm still trying to find my voice. Sometimes I'm like very monotone and dry. And sometimes hmm. I'm like very, energ- I guess, expressive. So I don't, yeah. I'm not, I don't really know. Huh. So you're still figuring things out. Trying to. Yeah. Trying to not quit. Okay. I'm just crazy. I'm like seven years in. I was thinking of quitting last year. Oh, no. Like, was it around the FPIA? Because that, that brings up emotions. Oh, my God. Well, that, I mean, it was crazy. That, was, that competition was the first one that I ever made it to the finals in, in 2022. Because every other competition I'd ever done, I got knocked out in the first round. Mm. So I'd honestly, for that one, had been like, I had like... I was like, I finally let go of like the stakes of it. Oh. And that's when I was able to advance to the, to the, to the finals. And wow, I, I think, learned. yeah. And I think there really is something, um, not to quote Nazi Kanye West, <laughs> not to quote a Nazi, but, uh, but here we are on the, <laughs> on the heels of praising <laughs> fraternities. Sure. Uh, continue, continue uh, on. When you, it's from one of his songs. When you try hard, that's when you die hard. Mm. And that's, I forgot what song that is, but yeah. it's true. I think when you overthink it, yes, that's when you blow it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, such a, it's such a roller coaster. Yeah. I, uh, why, why did you want to quit? I, just, I was just like not really making, I felt like I wasn't really making enough progress as I wanted to. Mm. I was comparing myself to other people. Ah. Mostly the comparing myself to other people, not getting booked on certain shows, staying home on Saturday night, just, <gasps> just like stewing in my room, like mm, I'm, a, I'm fucking funny. Fuck you guys, <laughs> you know. That was like my energy for like six months. Hmm. And it's very, and then it's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. Because the more you don't go out, the more people don't see you, right? And the more they don't want to book you, and then the angry you get. And so I, I just, just like trying to reflect on that cycle of like. And just, anyway. So, uh, why not create your own thing so that you could do that? Oh, like my own show? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I did, you know, I did, I was producing for a while, String Theory Comedy, rest mm-hmm. in peace. Yeah. Um, I had some good show. It was a Monday night show. Uh-huh. I love pain. I like, was like, <laughs> I'm going to do a show. Let's do it in the middle of nowhere on a Monday night in the winter at a violin shop, yeah. which is, they were very nice to me. They were very kind. And it's a great space. But um, I did that for a while, and it was just produ- – you know, and I think producing is its own bag of uh, worms. It's, yep. it's ha- so hard to yeah. get people to come to a show. It's so tough. Yeah. I would pass out flyers and spend a bunch of money on advertising, and it's tough. Yeah. Thank it's you guys for – thank you for helping promote that. Yeah. I think I got some – I think you messaged me that someone wanted to come to the show oh. a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. I don't know. And, and then uh, they were inquiring about it. I'm like, it's canceled. <laughs> don't remind. I, there are so many shows, but every once in a while, like if I, because I follow so many comics, and if I 
if I get a, a wild hair, I'll look at their feed to see, are they promoting the show anymore? And that's what happened is I was like, well, oh, I haven't seen him promote the show in a while. So maybe it's not running anymore. And yeah. so then I'll, I'll ask, but with as many shows as are on our events page, it's hard to do that and keep up with it. Definitely. So I'd rather that the shows just continue and be successful rather than die and have to follow and chase up, you know, follow up. I know it's, it is. And people still hit me up from out of town. They're like, Hey, I'd love to do your Aww. show on Monday. I'm like, <laughs> delete me from your spreadsheet. Delete. <laughs> I know you have a spreadsheet. <laughs> I know you have a spreadsheet. Delete it. Delete me. I know I'm row 82. Who doesn't have a spreadsheet? <laughs> Lot, lots of, com- believe it or not, oh, Valerie, lot, most, com- most comedians. <laughs> like I say, I have a spreadsheet of shows uh-huh. or like bookers and they'll be like, what? I'll be like, I'm like, it's crazy. I feel like some, like I'm, I'm like, well, it's because I like came from engineering and mm-hmm. business. And so it's like, yep. I'm, I take a very analytical, like you know, ruthless approach to comedy and like very like, I look at it like a sales pipeline. That's kind of how I look like, like I have a list of things that I'm working on and I'm trying to make them happen. And then other comics are just like vaping DMT (laughs) and they're, and they're doing better than me. I'm like, you're vaping DMT. They're like living like rock stars. And I'm like, how are you getting (laughs) coast? I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm just gonna. I gotta stop ranting. Uh, as, as a as a parent, I could tell you that in uh, 10, 15 years, you're gonna be better off because you hung out with spreadsheets versus vaping with DMT. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank I'm I, and I I I I'm glad you see it my way, because yeah. I like. I mean, ugh, I don't want to get dark, but like so many comics are just like, they're just depressed and like they're just on. They're always, I mean, like, they're all, I mean, like. Hey, I'll I'll take a puff of a joint every like three months, yeah. or I'll have a beer after a show sometimes. But like some comics, like they just like do just. I just see so many comics doing blow, just living like living fast. It's crazy, and I'm yeah. just like, for me, it's like okay, well that, well there's the mental health side of it. Like okay, you're coping with your depression with with the substance, which is sad. Mm-hmm. But also it tells me it's like okay, well then like, don't tell me that you give a shit about comedy. When you're when you're doing like eight lines of blow every night, yeah. don't tell me that you care about this as a career. If you did, you know you wouldn't be taking that risk. Yeah. But then I say that to people, and they're like, "Shut up, Sean. You lose." Yeah. They'd be like, "Oh, okay, 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 buzzkill." They're never gonna hear you anyway. They're not gonna hear you until they're you know rock bottom or you know they they fuck up a big opportunity. Ex- and yeah, yeah, that's so real. Yeah, yeah. Or until they want to open for me. Yeah. No, uh, sorry, exactly. I'm being really arrogant. Are you going to drug test your openers? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so... Oh, my God. I w- you just gave me an amazing idea. I You you just ruined so many... Trademark o- that shit, Oh, man. my God. I would <laughs> drug test my op. Yes. I'm going to be the first... This is an amazing idea. Like, they're like... They hit me up. They're like, hey, Sean, can I open for you? I'm like, yeah, just take a piss test. I'm going to... I, I need you to do it tomorrow. If I see find out that you use fake piss on the test, I will ruin you. I will you I will make sure you never work again. That's incredible. And honestly the show will be better. Yeah. I don't I actually it would I wouldn't be no one would be eligible. No one would be eligible. <laughs> There's a few. There's a few. I mean I always personally because of my maternal side, yeah. I always get really excited when a comic that I know has I never want to say they have a substance abuse problem because I never want to take it that far. But mm-hmm. uh, when they decide I'm going to go sober and quit substance use and like maybe because of my many years of talking to, to comics and, and other, just other people, it's like, yeah. you may not realize this, but this is a night and day between the substance user you and the sober you. And I love sober you. Yeah. And, but you can't, you, you just realize that you cannot tell somebody, stop it, you're ruining your, your life. They have to, to be want, willing to do it. It's, and then it's the, so sad that the, it has to be that way. Yeah, Ugh. because the risk is somebody overuses and they die from it. And then it's too late for you to be, you know, my approach of the, you know, you got to do it on your own, own time. You got to hit rock, rock bottom before you realize it. Oh my god! I can't. I mean, it's like, 
Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's, I mean, and it, it, it's like, uh, you want to be supportive. Well, it's that classic thing. It's like if you have a child that abuses drugs, mm-hmm. it's like, do you kick him out of the house? Yeah. Do you give him like a warning and then kick him out or like, a, like an ultimatum? Yeah. Or do you like, I don't, you know, it's like, what does it mean to enable right. someone? It's, it's really tough. Yeah. And they're on their own journey, but it's like, well, if the worst work and the, 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 something horrible happens, it's like, what could I have done differently? You're always going to wonder, like, yeah, what could I have done? It's like, I wonder that all the time. Like, should I stop selling Coke to other, other comments? I'm kidding. Sean, <laughs> uh, you don't know this, but I've brought in my friend uh, Jason Van Susteren or whatever the guy's name was that did the intervention shows. We're going to have a sit down about your, your, your Coke deal. <laughs> it's got to stop. And I mean the soda. I mean... <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I am a. I am a. a I do abuse sub caffeine, caffeine. I do abuse. Yeah. This is like my eighth, fourth coffee. Are you kidding me? In, I have a in re- one day. In yes. Two day- oh my god. I have like probably a thousand milligrams of caffeine a day. Jesus Christ. It's really amazing. I feel like wow. God when I drink coffee. Okay. Well, maybe you do have a substance. <laughs> Yes, but caffe- yeah, I I, I don't want to know the science behind it. Some people yeah. say it's bad for you, but I'm like, I can't. I'm not gonna stop. Yeah, I when I was in college because I was I was kind of along your path where uh, I was going to classes, studying really hard. I got a good GPA though, uh, you, but oh, at, okay. but at night <laughs> at night I would go out with my friends and there was a, a club that we'd go to and we'd just dance open to close and that was that was that's awesome somehow I managed yeah um, and then wake up again early at six a.m. I was drinking like a six pack of Diet Coke almost every day. Yeah. And I finally, and I went to a doctor, it was a regular checkup, and they noticed something and they said, are you, are you drinking a lot of caffeine? And I'm like, yes. And I'm like, you need to cut that. So they for fought? me, it was cysts. So. Oh God. Yeah. I ha- wait, I have one. Yeah. Are you serious? On my shoulder. You want to see it? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It's a, no, it's not like it's on my shoulder. Yeah, I actually showed it to my mom. It's like a. I thought it was skin cancer. Oh, did you get it checked out, Sean? <laughs> I have now uh, told you repeatedly uh, that I am maternal. You need to go check that I, checked out. I have I, a coworker who's dealt with skin cancer scares like for the last few years. Oh it's, God! Yeah, I, I have a, I actually, I have healthcare now. I gotta okay. go. I gotta do like four different. Yeah, yeah I gotta go check it out. Yeah. Yes. Uh, live on the show. Yeah. I will, I will go to the doctor. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> I'll bring my recording gear. This, this is like portable. an inter- This yeah, is this like is a go to the doctor yeah. intervention. Like, will you go to the doctor today? Right now? <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> you know, and they're like, will you go to rehab right now? Yeah. Like, no, 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 I need a day. <laughs> I love, did you see John Mulaney's new special? Uh, yes. I, yes. I love these like, I was, I went, I, the intervention, they wouldn't even let me go to the bathroom to freshen up. <laughs> so funny. People hated it. Or really? like people were like, "Oh, it wasn't that good." I'm like, "It was really." It was very good. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. And the way he like remember that way he's like, "Is there a four? Is that a fourteen year old in the balcony? Fourteen <laughs> year old, don't do any of this." Yeah. He's great. I think he's coming to Austin. I think. Oh, I got us. Yeah. He's come, I have yeah. to see him. Yeah. I mean, he's literally my top top five, top three maybe. Yeah. So Excellent funny. Writer. Yeah. Great delivery. Great writer, but his delivery is like. So good, mm-hmm. and just just like immediately in, endearing, and just yeah, I'm so jealous of him. I didn't want to like that special because I didn't like him as a human for what he went through. But again, circling back, it's the addiction that made yeah. him a shitty human for a yeah. while. Uh, and yeah, and he actually talks about that about like being some. I can't remember how he put it, but something about like having a good rec- reputation sucks. Oh yeah, I remember yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Because everybody has these, you know, high expectations, and you're, you know, you're off in the bathroom doing blow. <laughs> I was, I was pretty. I mean, like, I can't say I was like totally shocked that he was abusing drugs. Yeah. But I was kind of surprised. I was yeah. like, but it, you know, what they say, it's the clean comics that yeah. have the can sometimes have the darkest offstage behavior. God, Jim Jim Gaffigan's next. 
Oh, you think so? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. He's. I forgot. He's I was like, super clean. <laughs> I was like, so oh shit, are you revealing? So- <laughs> Yeah. This will get a million I, downloads oh now. God. Jim Gaffigan. We've talked Jim Gaffigan, <laughs> Joe R- Rogan, uh, John Mulaney. Who have we not talked about? We've talked about skin cancer. We covered a lot of ground. We have Saudi we have. Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Kuwait. Our sponsors. Our sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which I'd love to open for all these comedians. I'd love to open for any of them. Oh, for sure. Yeah, even Joe Rogan. Even Rogan. Yeah. I would. I would. I, I can't. I mean, I. I do have. I have. I have some integrity though. I wouldn't open for Chris D'Elia. Oh. I wouldn't yeah. open for, I don't even, I mean, guys, Cosby's touring again. I wouldn't open for him. <laughs> yeah. It's like, when people open for those comics, I'm like, I was just like, this is such a hard industry, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's like, and it feels like a step up to do a theater with yeah. someone, but it's like, it's a, I think it's such a step backwards to like, because like, I think when you're opening for someone, you're, you're kind of co-signing them. I I think, and whether you admit it or not, yeah. when you open for someone, consent, consent, whatever, and it's like they ask you to open and you say yes, you're and they booked you. You're co-signing their, you co-signing them as a person. Yeah. And I'm not going to co-sign Crystalia. Yeah. No way. Yeah. I was a long time to Leah fan. Like he's so. Noxious. I saw him at the comedy store. Yeah. He's so funny. He is. He's so goddamn funny. Yeah. Oh. He and like murders harder than anyone I anyone I've ever seen. It's yeah. crazy. I remember vividly the first time I saw him at the store, and uh, before ever, all the garbage came out about him, uh, I remember so vividly the joke he told, and how I was so wanting it to be on a special. And it wasn't until like the last special that he released before everything came out. Yeah. About him. And even then, because I, and I was so excited to see it like in a special format. I'm mm-hmm. like, I love this joke was so well done. And I saw him in Denver once and um, brought my son to the show before he, the, before everything came out when he came to Austin. So, like, I was hardcore. Wow. Did you and listen to his podcast at all? I listened to his podcast. He's a great broadcaster, he too. He really is. My, my boyfriend still is like a hardcore listener, and it's like, yeah, we can't talk about that, because I finally did. I had to say, no, I can't, I can't support it, because there's too much evidence that he was, he was grooming and just being so gross. Yeah, it's, I, exactly, and it's like, yeah. it's, it's, and people are like, oh, well, like, you know, especially white men are like, oh, well, the rule of law. What about hmm. innocent until proven guilty? I thought this was America. But then it's like, you can't ignore the fact that when it comes to sexual assault uh, cases in America, mm-hmm. the prosecution, it's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. It's a night, it's like, like, uh, what is the stat? Like 1% of sexual assault is prosecuted yeah something like that so it's like okay like yeah sure there's the court system but when you're talking about people with a lot of money and a lot of power you can't like let's look oh you like comedy because it's honest well let's be honest about how uh rape is prosecuted yeah and it's like you can we have eyes we have brains like it's not like well you're gonna trust a judge a judge (laughs) a judge really yeah and all these like, what's it? The uh, NDA that he like buys their silence. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. like if you're buying someone's silence, I don't know. It's just yeah. doesn't look good. No. no, that to me like, and I agree. It's like at a certain point, in in aggregate, it just crosses a line. Right. So I'm at 10, 20, 30 people. Mm-hmm. It's not a conspiracy. Yeah. It's not a conspiracy that 30 people are doing this to. They're not all trying to like. It's not a cash grab. Yeah. Who's gonna like anyway? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty shitty. Yeah. Who's gonna like? Who's gonna say that and like? Who's gonna go through the emotional trauma of like saying that a person I was assaulted for like fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars? Like testifying in court about that for fifty thousand dollars? Like, it, and they're saying, oh, that's these victims are just trying to like get a get a uh, a pound of flesh out of Crystalia. It's like no. Yeah, they're trying to do the right thing. And they're, you know, uh, not ruined. I mean, they might be ruined, but, you know, they're not treated well. Because really, the, yeah. the role of the prosecutor, of course, is <clears throat> to destroy the 
the witness. On yeah. The other side. I actually interviewed a private defense attorney wow. on my podcast, and it was so interesting huh. to hear him like talk about like his job. It was so cool. So you don't just talk to comics? No, I actually had a rule, and I already broke it. I was like, I don't want to talk to com. It's, or when I have comics on uh-huh. my show, um, on the Patreon, I'm like, okay, well, I have three rules on my podcast. We don't talk about podcasts. Uh-huh. We don't talk about, or like, we don't talk about other podcasts. We don't talk about the Austin comedy scene, and we don't tell road stories. Huh? Because whenever every single podcast yeah. out there, sure, like. Uh, that that advertises itself as a po- comedy podcast. We exist to make you laugh. All these podcasts are like, man, I was on the road. You ever been to a La Quinta? You ever been to a La Quinta? Oh, I was in a La Quinta. Blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Yo, Austin Comedy is really, really blowing up, man. Austin Comedy is really blowing up. It's like no one cares. People are so d- desperate for like something that's just... Have a point of view about something. Yeah. Have a point of view about something. <laughs> Aust- oh, I'm in Austin. I was in Austin. I was like, I was at Rogan's Club. It was crazy. Like, shut the... F- shut up. So on my podcast, when... I should honestly... Okay, you can use the soundboard. Okay, all right. When someone on my podcast t- starts t- telling a road story... Yeah. I do this. <laughs> oh, wait. That's <laughs> not, not that one. <laughs> I thought whistle would be like foul. Oh. Uh, it was more sexual than... <laughs> uh, Oh, okay. Once <laughs> this is gonna be fucked up. Ready? I'll, I'll erase the original version and we'll start from fresh. Okay, okay great. Yeah, when go. someone's like, "Man, I was at Sean. I was on the road. I was in uh, Indiana. I was like, <laughs> oh shit. Oh, there's a gunshot too." <laughs> when someone's like, "Sean, I was at a La Quinta. It was crazy." I go, "Did I tell you? Remember the rules of the show?" <laughs> That's how passion. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, we are going to, this is our intermission at an hour plus, uh, okay. and we're going to do our, the open card game. So this is a card game. Where should we begin? My web guru, Richard, uh, gave me this card game. You're going to point, okay. point to one that you want. You want that one. Okay. okay so I'm going to read this one to you after you read this one to me. Okay. And then, and then we'll, I'll answer. Okay. I'll answer what you read off and then I will read off and you'll answer this one. Okay. I'm like really nervous. It's open ended. Okay. They're usually like philosophical, but you can be goofy. You can have the little sound machine ready. Oh yes. I already used two out of the five. I have, <laughs> okay. I have three rounds left. Three rounds. Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? All right. The last time I got caught. <gasps> I got caught. Oh, I'm sure it's something that I did that my son yelled at me for. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that. Was... <laughs> I, thought no, I that do was... that all the time. Yep. Um, there is something, but it was like really goofy. Like I ate, I ate something of that I thought was kind of like in the family pool of food, but somebody was like, but he was like saving it, or he didn't think I should. What was, was it? I don't remember, but I remember it was. I think I'm pretty sure it was food related. I don't know. Maybe I'm projecting because my mom does that all the time. She'll eat our food. <laughs> she doesn't ask and i'm like wait a minute you should ask but you know that's what that's what you get when you live with you know multiple generations yeah you're like you know some people have a rule and others just don't give a fuck that's so true <laughs> oh my god i live alone now i love yeah. living alone oh it's the best oh uh, i've i'm i've like had roommates since the start of college i was yeah. always at a roommate and like it's like so nice to like have my own space yeah. and like because roommates eat your food. Yeah. And it's like yeah. a lot of... I was roommates with artists. Uh. And they use you as a therapist. Oh. <laughs> and like, you know, which I, lo- I love, you know. And they eat your food. It's the worst part is they eat your food and stay up all night and yeah. smoke weed. I'm like, just stop. Like, they're like, can I go... I like make a pizza. And they're like, eat the pizza without asking. Jeez. Or like, I'm, I'm very... I'm the same way with food. I'm like... That's an only child thing, because I I'm an only child. Oh, you uh, are. Yeah. So you know how it's it's horrible. Yeah. People people are like, oh, you're an only child. You're lucky. Oh, you so you got all the Christmas presents you wanted. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I was alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got the PlayStation Three, but it like <laughs> I like couldn't. I played alone. Yeah. Like I played Mario Party by myself. That's not yeah. fun. <laughs> and my my parents 
well, my dad liked card games, but my mom hated any kind of like board game or anything. So like, I couldn't even play games with my parents. Oh, so, yeah. I'm, I'm, I totally sympathize with that. <laughs> I empathize with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so sad. It's like, yeah. and I, I would like to ask my mom, like, mom, are, are you going to have, like, can I have a brother? Like, I think I asked that when I was like, oh, is it, am I going to get a baby brother? And uh-huh. she's like, no. Because my mom was 39 oh. when she had me. Oh, wow. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's, what do they call that? It's, it's a, uh, it's a horrible term. A geriatric, they call oh, it a geriatric okay. pregnancy. Oh. I'm like, that's a little rude. Yeah. Geriatric? She's not that. She's 39. <laughs> geriatric. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but I think that's why she didn't want to have another kid. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. So uh, you got busted eating some food. Yeah, I think so. I would be like, who, yeah. hey, you know what? Whatever. I, that's not it. That's not Or maybe, bad. so my son and I have an app on our phones so like I can follow where he's at. It tracks your phone's GPS. Oh, nice. And then he yeah. could do it with me too. And I think like he, he said, why did it take you so long? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I just, you know, it's like I was cheating. And then he's like, well, yeah, but I saw that you were over here. Ugh, I, Something like that. And I'm like, you know, with a kid, you know, it's it's fine. But I think I think that it should be one direct. I think you should see his, but it should not be the other way. <laughs> yeah. He shouldn't be like, right. why were you in a San Diego yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right, are you ready with yours? Uh, I'm ready. Oh, this one's going to be good. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm, I'm so just going to be on. totally honest. I think I might have to do Oh, this. you... <laughs> Hold on, I want to see what this one is. Okay, 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 all right. All right, Sean, the last time I got unreasonably upset. <laughs> unreasonably upset. Uh... Oh my god! Okay, let me think. Let me think. Unreasonably upset. I mean, I get angry a lot, but it's often justified. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, unreasonably upset. Uh, okay, let me think about my last few days. Um, uh, Oh, you know what it was? I was at a Don't Tell Houston, and uh, I did a I I did a it was like a great crowd. Everyone was doing well. Uh-huh. I go up there, and I have a I had an opening joke that I thought would crush, and it just bombed. Oh! And I got off stage, like I was like literally so excited about it. I was like listen, I was like getting hyped up for my set. I got off stage, I felt like shit. Uh-huh. I was like so mad at myself. But the, how did the rest of the set go? Yeah, I mean, I listened back. It was good, but I like. I, if I'm being honest, I like. You know, I like. I bombed gracefully, <laughs> like a lot of my like, and that's a lot of my jokes that usually do really well. Like, just kind of got like, ha ha ha, uh. like when they're like, you know, when the crowd goes like, ha, mm-hmm. instead of like ha ha ha, they you get one ha. Yeah. So I was like really pissed off at mm-hmm. myself for that, um, but uh, um. Uh, yeah, well, actually, well, actually, I shouldn't, this, this is not, I was up, this was when I was justifi- um, justifiably upset, is, um, uh, a good, uh, God, I don't know why I'm mentioning this, but, um, <laughs> well, I don't know if you probably heard about Nick Roche passing away. Yeah. That was not, uh, that was, that was rough. reasonably upset. Yeah. This was a horrible, last guy I would have thought yeah. to do that. I, anyway, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to, yeah. <laughs> caffeine yeah. makes me dark, I don't know, anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you are, if you are uh, alone in your, in your suffering, you're really not. And there's people, I mean, it, uh, this, this happens and it always makes me sad to see like the outpouring of love and support that comes after the fact. That's so true. Cause it's like, if that person had just known how well liked they were. And I'm old, so I'm, like, facing my mortality a little bit. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, what are, are people going to be nice <laughs> to me about me? And it's like, man, I'm kind of lucky that I have this dumb infrastructure web, you know, website because I have people that say, thank you for, you know, thank you for posting our show. Thanks for sharing the Instagram. I'm like, okay, well, you know, at least I don't feel alone. And it's not for, you know, it's for nothing. And it just sucks that people that are fighting these these internal demons aren't realizing 
that people love them. People have fond, you know, thoughts and memories of their first time with them. Yeah. And, ugh. Just, yeah. Yeah. No, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's really, really just... I mean, he was he was like the last guy I would have thought to yeah. do that, which is often the story. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, like, uh, um, you know, that I think of that photo a lot where it's like, this is the face of depression, and it's just a bunch of, com- Robin Williams is just like, having yeah. like smiling, it's like, that is the face of depression, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I'm doing great, by the way. Okay. I'm not. Good. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I mean, you're so caffeinated. I know. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I just break down. I'm on meth. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, just no, kidding. Sean, never tried it. About this. Never tried it. Never will. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah. So talk to somebody, please. Yeah. Um, I was going to say the something. Suicide else. hotline nine eight eight, which is a horrible. Or maybe it's nine nine eight. They changed yeah. it recently. I'm yeah. like, why would you change it to nine eight eight? That's like so unmemorable. Nine eight eight. Ugh. Goodness. Oh, I, I remember uh, I because I get so many emails from people, you know, with their events. And I I, I found the email when Nick submitted the San Jack open mic. Um, you're going to make me cry. I, yeah. Oh. I'm like, that's, that mic is still going. Yeah. And, you know, I wish there had been flowery words, but, you know, that was three years ago that he, yeah. he submitted that. And I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, he was a staple. He was a real staple. And it's it's just like... Yeah, you never know what people are battling inside. Yeah. Um, and he was killing it, too. He's doing so well. He's doing so well. But yep. he'll go down. I mean, he you know, he really could have been one of the best comics of all time. Hmm. He was such a great writer. Just really, really dry, but, like, incisive with his words. So. Ugh. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, well I guess that, that, that card game, where should we begin? Yeah, we that ended. really... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, gosh, what else should we talk about? Do you want to talk about about Saudi Arabia some more? I would love to. <laughs> I would genuinely love to talk. Oh about no! Tell me about Sean's show. You you told me that you battled with uh with figuring out the right name for it. But That's, you know why why did you finally decide? Oh, I gotta have a podcast. You know I, and I have gone back and forth. Man, there's so many things I want to say. Oh my god. The um, people, every comp, I, I don't take advice from anyone anymore. <laughs> I used to take so much advice from people. Except for me telling you to go to the doctor. Yeah, I and will. Check out that my, is, okay. yeah. All right. Check out my cyst. Yes. It's not skin cancer. Yeah. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Well, we don't know. It's not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to check it out? No, no I don't. I'm, no. I know. I don't want to gross I'm you so out. I'm so squeamish. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> I should go to the, it's not like, <laughs> Have you seen those videos? Is it Quasimodo levels, like. No, no, okay. that's not that bad. <laughs> right. You would see it through my shirt, like <laughs> it's not in your bag. Like, Quasimodo. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, no, like people give me advice. Uh, uh, I don't take advice from comics anymore because we're all we're all projecting. I feel like I just realized all artists project. Not I don't want to speak in generalities, yeah. but most comics like they all project. They're all inse- we're all insecure. We all. You know, whether we, I think my, it's, I don't know, maybe I'm cynical, but like a lot of artists are like, they give you advice that will benefit themselves, whether or not they know subconscious, subconsciously or consciously. Yeah. They'll like, any, I got so much advice that was like, S- slow down, wait, wait your turn, just keep hustling, oh. just keep showing up. And it's like, like, or like, oh, or like, or like for podcasts, like, oh, you have a podcast. <laughs> uh, you and you and the rest of the Austin comedies. Oh wow, you have a podcast. Oh, podcast. Yes, I have a podcast. It's like, you know, and, and it's like, it's there's a lot of bad podcasts. Uh, You're on one right now. <laughs> no, this is the best podcast. I'm 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 glad I'm here. I'd rather be here than Joe Rogan's show. I don't want to. What what would I do on Joe Rogan's show? Oh, whoa, that elk got shot. Yeah. Dude, watch this. Hey, Jimmy, pull up this, pull up this elk getting shot. The way this elk gets shot is pretty crazy. If you see it, it's alive, and then the guy shoots it, and oh, it's God. dead. Oh wow! Anyway, trans kids. Oh, That's God. his show. That's his whole show. 
anyway, but people are like, yeah, uh, I like had a show, like I had a podcast. I'm, I like kind of went through different evolutions of failed podcasts. Mm. One of them, uh, or I had a podcast with my buddy Tony Casillas. That was the last show I did uh-huh. together, and we were actually getting some heat. Like we had some traction, but like ultimately, and before that, I did like a solo thing. So like uh, it had been a couple iterations of it, and um, I just think that like it's it's a uh, it's it's a uh, I try to be pragmatic about like being a comedian mm-hmm. because I think a lot of a lot of comics are like purist or like a, a lot of comics want to be like purist stand ups today and I I respect that and I think you can you can do that. Um, but I just, I do love podcasting. Hmm. So I like genuinely love to talk about the news and be funny with people. And, and uh, I love having conversations, you know, so it's, and it's like, and I think people that do podcasts just so they can say they have one, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Cause it's like, there's so many podcasts real that you can just tell that they like, they don't want to do it. Hmm. And it's, and they're just doing it because their agent said that they should do a show to like reach people but that is an added benefit is like reaching new fans and it is it is a way to like finance i have a, a guy on my patreon i have a guy that pays me 10 bucks a month Woo-hoo. for my <laughs> well, and it's like goodness, awesome yeah i'm like and it's it's um he's like a super big fan of the show and we talk on instagram and um so I, it's it's like it's 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 motivating in a way yeah, yeah. and it keeps you right it keeps me writing and like i'll put out uh yeah, I just I like I like it. You know, it's it's fun. Do you do the social media thing too? Because I noticed you do have a lot of clips on your Instagram. I I you if you have a TikTok, I haven't gone to to see it. But do you do like little clips that you pull from your your episode? I or? do. I'm in the clip game. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. it's it's horrible. But there's I, people that you know they're selling out clubs because they became TikTok viral sensation yeah so. no it, it it works it it works and it's like anyone that says like that like um and i, I mean i kind of where where i've landed at least right now with the way i'm approaching the comedy landscape is like i see two paths maybe this is just me it's, maybe there's a third path but the way i see it is you can come up through a club that develops you and co-signs you Mm -hmm. like the mothership or Mm -hmm. the comedy seller and kind of work out and work out your reps and just kind of be this, do that in silence or whatever, just kind of in your local scene and then kind of burst onto the scene with like your first thing Mm -hmm. and not really do the internet. There's plenty of comics at the mothership and the comedy seller and the comedy store that just don't do the internet, Yeah, but they're really funny and they're talented and so, and then like later on, they f- they turn on the f- switch and start doing the clips once they've got the hour already, or they've got the they've got the backing of that big club yeah. that can help them, or you just do, or you just go all in on the internet, and that's kind of what I'm doing. Is like, or that's what I, that to me is a, a lesser evil, because it's like, I just I hate I hate gatekeepers, mm. I just hate like having to be fake around like just like it's like high school yeah it's like being in like a comedy like trying to like get into the mothership or trying to get into any club it's like trying to get into harvard it's like Mm. you have to play or like getting into goldman sachs that's the way i see it and people hate me when i say that but like trying to get into the mothership is like trying to get it get into goldman sachs and they're like you could not that could not be a worse analogy sean (laughs) i'm like no it's actually a really accurate analogy you have to politic you have yeah. to bullshit. You have to like po- hang out politically, associate yourself with certain people politically so that you can get in. I just, my, I just don't, I can't, that's not how I operate. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, I like, I think clips are, I mean, and so that's why I do clip. I like begrudgingly do clips because <laughs> it's like, well, I, I find it fun. Yeah. I mean, they are like destroying our youth. <laughs> like I am. I am uh, complicit in the destruction yeah, of the are. attention of the ge- of Gen Z, <laughs> which I'm honestly happy about. Because anyway, no, that that sucks. But it's like anyway, yeah. yeah. So I I do like I put out clips and it's helped. I mean, I've I've kind of recently got a little bit more steam on Instagram, so Good. it feels great. 
to like just ha- connect directly with people, right? Versus like playing this game. This is game playing this game of trying to like I don't know, like be uh be in with these the, be yeah. in with a click, and you just become. I just it's it's just not for me. Yeah. Not, not everybody. I I don't know. I mean, I I I get it, but also there are some venues that aren't that are more open, and you. I mean, you do have to kind of show up, go to their their mics, and you know, make appearances, and you know, you'll get you'll get picked up for things. Yeah, you know, I see the valve model is yeah. very loose, and you know, you go to the mic, you know, and you get on there a few times, and you might get the attention to to open for for somebody coming in that's true and that's very much you know the way austin was you had cap city was the big gatekeeper um and now they're just among the (laughs) the the many club gatekeepers um but the valve is still kind of holding to its gatekeeper light i i love the valve yeah um and i mean i don't want to be a hypocrite like i do get booked to cap city yeah so like i think People, if people listen, they're like, oh, Sean gets, Sean's in a Cap City. He's like, <laughs> he's a hypocrite. It's like, yeah, I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> How often are you getting getting up at, at Cap City? I'm there, I'm there tonight. Oh, that's actually. right. That's right. Oh, and here we are For, having this long. Don't you have to be there? Oh, what time is it? Oh, shit. I mean, we're, we're it's 4.30. Oh, oh, no. It's not till okay. 7. Okay. All right. So we got a couple hours. Yeah, we got so we to do the Joe Rogan. Three hour long. Did you not know the, the episode? Because it's episode two ninety nine, we have to go two hundred and ninety nine minutes. I'll, um, I'll go four hundred. <laughs> uh, well, we gotta we gotta start watching some some elk videos. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I am so bummed because I think I've listened to maybe one or two because the guest was so compelling. Um, Post Malone was on there recently, and I still haven't watched that episode. And I'm like, I love Post Malone so much. I am, you know. The prototypical white-ish. I mean, I'm Lopez, but I may as well be white. Um, old mom who loves Post Malone. I <laughs> love that. His demographic is so like, <laughs> and then old lady mom. That's so funny. <laughs> I kind of listen. I honestly, I mean, he's such a huge artist. I've never really listened to much of the stuff. I love him so much. People are yeah. always like, "Oh, the face tattoos. He's a thug." I'm like. You don't even know the backstory of why he has so many tattoos. Yeah. And you, you know, know, my my mom, I love my mom, but she'll be like, I don't like rap because it's arrogant. There's a lot of <laughs> ego with rap. I'm like, you're borderline racist. That's a borderline <laughs> racist thing to say. She's like, I don't like rap. I'm like, okay, just say it out loud. Yeah. I don't like, right, mom? <laughs> oh, you don't like rap. It's like, it's kind of dog whistle. Yeah. Not to throw my mom, I love my mom, but you know. I don't know if you do. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't have uh, a good relationship. Uh, no, <laughs> I love I love her very dearly, mother dearest. Um, no, she she uh, no she's she's great. Yeah. she 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 but works she like, like rap. she doesn't like rap. Wait, what was, was like, the reason that she said she didn't? Because they're there, there's she said it's like it's too arrogant. arrogant. It's like he, he's like everyone's just overconfident. It's very narcissistic. I mean, Frank Sinatra much? Tony Bennett. Recipe. thank you yeah yeah Man, yeah guys. my way <laughs> yeah that's an arrogant song <laughs> exactly i did it my way <laughs> but like when rap and it's like yeah some rap is yeah it's just i mean you know you know when people make any statement about a genre i'm like you yeah. can't you can hate you can hate rap but it's like you gotta have a better right compelling yeah. reason than oh it's arrogant it's like all art i mean it's it's rap isn't even a genre rap is it like i love rap yeah. Is Post Malone a rapper, or does I he? See, I don't think he is. He just does like he's saying he's a. Uh, yeah, I, I, he's kind of. He's does he like he's like a sing, he sings though. It's he, like actual me- melodic, right? Yeah, it's not. I, I think the first album that came out was close to rap, so that's how he was categorized. But I think as he's you know released more and more albums, it's more poppy. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But you know he'll have. Well, I mean, his first, I think it was his first Malone, first album he had Justin Bieber on. So it's like, you know, whatever, oh, really? whatever he is, uh, as far as rap or pop, you know, I think he's pop. Mm-hmm. But Nicki Minaj was on an album and he's had, and Doja Cat has been on an album. Oh, wow. So okay. he kind of transcends, 
he transcends musical styles and I'm super, super excited. I don't really like country music other than like the old school country music. I cannot wait for him to put out a country album. Is he going to put out a country album? I think he will. He's going, he's doing like a country festival next year. No way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Post Malone country. Yeah. He's moving to Austin. He's doing all the, (laughs) he's playing the game. He's moving to Austin. He was, he was at a kill Tony and I'm like, oh, it's, Damn it! <laughs> this is how much I love Post Malone. I've seen him four, maybe five times in concert. Wow! One of the most incredible shows. Oh, I love. I mean, yeah. he seems re- like a, just a really authentic guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. So maybe maybe I should listen to it. Is there a way to listen to Joe Rogan but like mute Joe? <laughs> Just that's care. a hilarious just like making a monologue yeah uh i'll call my my tech friends oh please do. we'll get them yeah, on that okay. we'll get a product yeah. the post malone experience yeah. <laughs> it's just him talking it's just honestly you could probably uh, do use ai and like blend probably, the yeah. show back to, down to a monologue oh that's listenable oh my god but maybe not because it, it's hard to like if this episode was just one of us it'd be hard to be like it'd hard be hard to follow yeah that's, That's funny. Yeah. I think. I mean, I do think Rogan is a is a is a good interviewer. Like he does keep the conversation going. Yeah. And I think he asks. Well, that's why I was interested. Like, got into him in, in the first place. Like maybe twenty nineteen is like. There were multiple times I think where I would be. He asked. I think he's he does know how to ask the question. Mm-hmm. The next question that we're all thinking. Hmm. Like if he's interviewing like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Or someone. Yeah. Like, Neil deGrasse Tyson will say something, and then Joe will ask a question that, like, ooh, like, what, that yeah. makes you want to know the answer to. Sure. And I think that was really the charm of it, for me, mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. Um, so I just gushed about Post Malone, who's somebody that you love their music. Uh, you know, I've, I've been listening to a lot of Freddie Gibbs. Okay. Have you heard of Freddie Gibbs? Not at all. He's a hip hop artist. Okay. He's a rapper. Um, I think he was in on, I have to write this down. Yeah. Because... Definitely check out Freddie Gibbs. Great, great, uh, great artist. Um, you know, I wish I knew more about like his, I mean, in his music, I, I don't, I don't know his actual backstory. Like I've never like, I guess listened to an interview with him where yeah. he talks about himself, but in his music, he talks about like, you know, one of his songs is called um, Something to Rap About. And the lyrics are like, God made me sell crack, so I have something to rap about. Huh. But it's like very soulful. It's not like aggressive and yeah. hard. It's like, and the samples, um, there's this other artist, Mad Lib. Mad Lib is kind of like behind the scenes on a lot of a lot of hip hop and rap artists mm-hmm. will use Mad Lib's. Um, I think I know s- that name from... My son has talked about him. Oh, really? Definitely. Yeah. If if you like post, I've I've heard a little bit of post. Definitely check out Mad Lib too. Mad Lib yeah. kind of like has like there's like photos of him going through like entire record stores, listening to every album wow. to find like good samples. Yeah. That he'll then kind of like produce into beats that like Freddie Gibbs and a lot of other rappers wow. um, have used. And like Freddie Gibbs, I think has done something with Tyler the Creator. He's had Tyler the Creator feature on some of his music. Um, I've been really, I and I also love metal. I'm oh, really, really into metal. <laughs> I love um, like when I only when I run, I like going runs and stuff. Oh wow! And I'll listen to like you know Pantera. Yeah, yeah. I listen to, like Pantera <laughs> on run on like long runs. It's so well, motivating. I guess yeah. I mean like listening to like Pantera. Like one of my favorite Pantera songs is like um uh. Well, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, it's called, you know, By Demons Be Driven. Have you heard that song uh-uh. before? It's just like, the, I don't know. I don't, see, I don't know the names of the guys in the band, but like the, the, the lead singer is just like, like um, he just says, By Demons Be Driven. And it's like, <laughs> it like really hypes you up yeah. if you're exercising, yeah, if you're good. running. Metallica, yeah. Slayer. Slayer's great. Huh. I love Slayer. Like, they're like 80s pop metal yeah okay. I, I think they are definitely like pop metal yeah. like um they wrote like raining blood <laughs> it's so funny it's metal's a very funny genre i should know more metal there's a comic that i really like that's really big into metal and uh yeah i should know more whatever yeah uh, they're they're great but also like zeppelin and i kind of like all kinds of stuff yeah um 
Oliver Anthony, huge fan. Yeah. Just I don't know. Is have you heard of him? Why did I? Uh... He he like has been in the news in the last couple months. He had the song about. It's the video. He's in like a he's in the, like a grass field. You know. Oh, sorry. Mic'd up. Uh-huh. Acoustic guitar singing about. He it was he was kind of. The song ended up being like a, a talking point for a lot of conservative news outlets. Huh. No, I um, must have missed this. Oh, really? Yeah, it was. A, he was on Rogan's podcast actually, oh. and it was a huge story. He was like, um, he was. Uh, uh, you've definitely heard the song. It's called uh, "Rich Men North of Richmond." Oh, have okay. you heard of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, all of yeah. Anthony. Oh boy, that song was. Like, <laughs> that's one of your favorites. That's oh no, I was, that was a joke. <laughs> I know. I'm all right, I'm going to ask you my, my – uh, I have two standard questions that I'm closing out my, my episodes with. Let's do it. Uh, one is I want you to think about your very favorite joke. Of all just time? Of yeah, just right now. What is your favorite joke? Just, uh, just think of it. Don't – I hold on. Ha- okay. Have it in your mind. Okay. In your, your phone or in your notepad, what's the title of the joke? Just the title. Oh, of mine or of all time? Oh. No, 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 of yours. Oh, of yes, mine. Of oh, yes. oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was like, oh my God, my favorite joke. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, let me think of it. Uh, uh, okay, I got it. Okay, and the title? It's called uh, Rocket Science. Rocket Science, okay. Now, tell me why it is your favorite joke without saying anything about the joke itself. Uh, I like this joke because uh, it's one, it's like five years old at this point. And it was the first joke that I wrote that like I was proud of. Huh. I had written so many jokes before that joke that just were like mediocre, bolt, like bad, like shit. Yeah. Like I just kept writing bad, awful stuff that I wasn't proud of. Hmm. And I just like kept doing it on stage and I was just not getting any laughs. And then I like wrote this joke Rock, titled Rocket Science, mm-hmm. and it was just uh, I like. I mean, it's my favorite. It's my favorite joke to tell. It's not even that like hard to like. I mean, it's like I like it because it's and not to talk myself up, but it's like it is a simple joke, mm-hmm. and it's like the, uh, I won't say anything about it, but it's like it's an easy target. Like mm-hmm. I make. It's not like it's like I'm like crazy. You know? Oh my god! Like I wish I'd thought of that. It's like a pers- It's just a personal joke about me studying rock- aerospace engineering. Or yeah. I say rocket science for the joke. And I, yeah, it's my favorite because uh-huh. it always, it usually, it's like 98% hit rate if I do it right. And uh, it gave me the confidence to keep going. Huh. I like wrote That's it big. and I wrote it and I never, like I wrote it and it was funny when I wrote it. Oh, so you haven't had to tweak and refine I Too did. Much. I've added to it, yeah. but like I did adjust it a, a little bit. But basically, the the first time I wrote it is kind of the essence. The essence huh. is still the same. Wow. Um. So yeah, that's that's definitely my favorite joke. That's cool. So come out and listen to it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, no. Listen to my pod, podcast yeah. instead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if they did both? Do both. Yeah. Do both. I think they should. Yeah. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you want people to know about? Uh, well, if you don't know, the Saudi government killed a journalist by the name of Jamal Khashoggi, and uh, they are still an ally of the United States, and um, and that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the U.S. is really good about uh, <laughs> that thing. It starts with an H. Uh Hypocrisy. That's what it is. <laughs> and so am I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you're taking their their ad money, and yet, you know, the Saudi Arabians, you're taking their ad money. And yet, I would take an ad deal with them. <laughs> Maybe. I have a price. I can be purchased. Yeah. Wow. If you're listening to this, I can be bought. Yeah. <laughs> the two listeners plus whoever Sean is bringing over. I have a huge base. Yeah. Episode three hundred. <laughs> You're going to have sponsors knocking down your door. I should. They're going to be like, you had Sean Riley on your show? The Sean Riley? Uh-huh. The, uh, the Sean show? Hum- human, Sean Riley? human rights activist <laughs> and uh, conservative firestorm Sean Riley? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, should I do anything else? Should we say anything else to celebrate $2.99? Uh, should I keep going? 
Even though no one listens? I'm trying to... Uh, I'll stop. You, you have listeners. You have listeners. How many listeners do you have? Oh, I'm not even going to put the number out there. It's, it's not two, though. It's not two. But, yeah. No. See, you know, you know I, I'm very, like... I, I joke about, like, my show not being that big mm-hmm. either. But I used to. Now I don't. I'm like... I'm like you just have to speak it into existence. I just yeah. try to speak it into existence. I'm like, I just want people to like say, "Hey, I listened." I mean, sometimes I do get that, and I love that. You know, when people yeah. say, "Oh, I listened to this episode." You know, they cherry pick whoever they <laughs> they want. And by the way, uh, Richard, the web guru, he recently made a change to the podcast page because it was impossible to see the people that we had talked to. Because mm. I wanted people to realize, I, I've talked to a shit ton of people, and it's not just yeah. Austin. It's you know, national comics so you you can now click on there's a little drop down menu and you can actually scroll down the list of names to see oh somebody might pique your interest that yeah. way so anyway. yeah and also it's like you know i think well and that's that's the uh other thing about putting out like clips online is it's like i think um it does help promote the show too and it's yeah. like but it's just it's just that it's just that extra like time and money that you need to invest into like yeah you know making con making i hate saying the words making content it makes me want to die <laughs> it, like it, i sound like gary v i'm like you got to make content like <laughs> five fifty pieces of content a day it's like yeah. <laughs> hey gary no one no we didn't all invest in twitter we know that you invested in twitter and you made a lot of money on twitter but we did we weren't all angel investors in 2006 yeah we can't you know what? I, I hate Gary Vee. I, I hate that guy. Do you know Gary Vee? I have no idea who that is. Gary Vaynerchuk? No. You got to check. Right, write down no, Gary like, Vee. He v. is, okay. you will, I mean, I, you will hate him. All right. I, I hope you hate him. <laughs> we can hate him together. What if I write you and say, I love him. Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> well, the thing is, he makes, like, he's like, you might have seen his clips on social media. Like, he'll, he'll like, he'll be like being, it'll be like, a, you know what's so disgusting about it? It's fake candid. Hmm. It's 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 like like he'll be doing an interview and it'll be shot. And this is the genius of Gary V. And what's also I think so malicious and horrible about the videos he puts puts out. Yeah. It's like fake candid. So it'll be shot in 720p. It'll be like from like over there. Like for us, it's like uh-huh. if someone like filmed us from like way over there and zoomed in. Yeah. And then it'll be Gary V. Being like, "You're young. You have time." People are like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm 34. I, I'm, I, I, my life's over. I haven't made it yet. You're young. I'm 40. Take I'm just getting started. And it'll be shot from over there and be like, wow, like is, but it's like, no, he's paying the guy to stand <laughs> 20 feet away to film from there uh-huh. and to my, and to make it. Uh-huh. It's all just, it's all, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a psyop. It's a psychological operation. Wow. Wow. And uh, okay. and people fall for it. Okay. And I'd love to talk to Gary Vee on my podcast. (laughs) I shit on a... I feel like I'm digging myself a hole here. I'm kind of like purposely digging myself a hole with like Rogan and all these other people like... Which I'll still open for Rogan. Hopefully he respects the fact that I'm critical of him. Yeah. And I'm not a yes man. Right. So Rogan, if you're listening to this... Yeah. Rogan. Please. I'll interview you. Talking about (laughs) Sean. Come on Comedy Wham. (laughs) Come 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 back on Comedy (laughs) Wham. I know you live in, no, I'm not going to, in Austin. (laughs) Uh, Okay, Uh, this may be my world record longest episode. Wow, I love talking to you. This has been a lot of fun, but I don't want to, I don't want to hold you, hold you too long. No, that's fine. So, Um, I have one closing question. Let's hear it. One word to describe your future. My future? Oh, uh... Okay. That's not the word. The word is not okay. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> that was horror. I was. I, I should have chosen uh, a better word. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That was. <laughs> that was wow. That Please was... still check out my stuff. You know that was a. That song really like makes me sound. Oh, actually, can I change the word? Uh, sure. Sorry. Okay. The word, cash. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what you're doing it for, right? I'm this for the money. I hate art. I hate stand-up comedy. I truly hate stand-up comedy. Oh, stop. I hate it. I'm in this for the money. I'm in this for the glory and the uh, the glitters. I'm in it for the glitters, not the gold. Okay, sure. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, Sean, that is a wrap on Comedy When It Presents, Sean Riley. I don't know why I said Sean, that is a wrap on Sean Riley, because you obviously know this is I a will be line. listening, so you are talking to me in a way. <laughs> okay, Sean, tell us where we can find you on social media and your upcoming projects. Uh, Sean Riley Comedy on social media, everywhere. And then uh, check out my podcast, Sean Show. It's a weekly show. I talk about um, the news, and I try to be funny. I have a Patreon. Please subscribe to it. Uh, and then um, what else am I I'm doing? Uh, oh, I just, I'm very excited about this. I just got a headlining date at uh, the LOL San Antonio. Ooh, doing, congratulations. Thank you so much. That's I'm very, big. and if you're local, listen to this. If you're like local to Austin or San Antonio, like it's Sunday, November 12th. Okay. Come check it out. I need to sell some tickets. It's a 400 seat room. It's a big room. And, um, I'm not Crystal Lee. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even sell it out these Actually, days. Actually, the first time I saw your your friend Tony Casillas was at at uh, LOL. LOL. Yeah. Oh, awesome! Yeah, he was yeah. opening for Jeremiah Watkins. Oh, that's so, great! Yeah. I lo- love LOL. Come out! It's yeah. a great it's a great club. Uh, yeah, Friday or Sunday, November twelfth. What time? Uh, at uh, I think it's going to be at seven. Okay. But the ticket link is not up yet, okay. so I got to get the ticket link up. But it's my first time headlining a real club. Nice. So, so I'm pretty. Pretty excited to sell 12 tickets. Yeah. <laughs> no, come on out. It'll be great. <laughs> I've got some friends in San Antonio. I'll see if they're, oh, they're around. I would love that. Yeah. I would love that. For sure. Okay. Well, we hope you've enjoyed. Oh, a- any closing words before my last few closing words about episode 299? Uh, the end of the 200s. Oh, man. Thanks for being a, a diehard Comedy Wham listener. This is a dope. Thank you so much for having me. And sure. I, I really, I mean, you are a very undervalued member of the Austin comedy scene. Aww. So Thank you. you deserve more respect. Yeah. And <laughs> when I'm famous, uh-huh. I will make sure that you get that respect Thank that you've you. always deserved. Thank you. I will force people to, to respect you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. That's, with with my influence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where you're like, Sean, stop. I, this is wrong. I'll be like, no, it's not. Okay, that's my idea. Thanks for having me. Yeah. (laughs) We hope you've enjoyed learning about how Sean got to be the comedic genius that you heard today just as as much as I have. Stop flattering me. (laughs) This has been Comedy Way. I'm going to quit. No, Sean. Kidding. All right. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Valerie. (laughs) Appreciate it.